Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Last night I was speaking to my friend CH and he said, Cap, I've built a load more stuff for DCS, would you like to come and shoot them with me? And of course I said, yes, hello CH. Hello. Right, so what you've added is an alligator sniper anti-material rifle, a Stugner P anti-tank guided missile, a modernized American M270A1 MLRS with three types of missile, and an extra variant of the M142 HIMARS with the more modern missile, the PRSM, which I'm going to call PRISM today because it sounds cool. So my job was to think, okay, how can we present these to the viewers? So we're going to do a little bit of a competition and a test to show how over the years missiles have become more accurate. As well as that, we're going to show off the sniper rifle and show off the Stugner just generally. First, let's talk about the units involved. CH, the alligator, this is an anti-material rifle. What does that mean? Does that mean it's for shooting vehicles and not people? Exactly. That's the whole point of it. We have seen a lot of uh, caliber 50 or 12.7mm uh, rifles, and this is actually the old Russian uh, cartridge, the 14.5 by 114mm uh, cartridge. It's an enormous cartridge. Uh, you can imagine the recoil in one of these guys. <laughs> right. Yeah. It has a maximum firing range of like 3 kilometers. So who's using this at the moment? It's uh, Ukrainian made and it's uh, fielded in, in Ukraine. It's actually on the list on the, uh, I think it's a third place right now on the longest uh, sniper shots. Oh, wow. Next, the Stugner P, is this Ukrainian as well? Yeah, that's correct. Their indigenous uh, anti-tank guided missile system. We have seen a lot of it uh, in, uh, during the current conflict. It's uh, rather modern. We have uh, good uh, ammunition here, the missile RK RK2MK which uh, in this case is a 152 millimeters uh, missile, which will go up to three nautical miles, uh, and it will penetrate uh, most uh, modern uh, tanks at reasonable ranges then. One thing I've learned in the last few months is how big an arms manufacturer Ukraine is. I thought they basically borrowed and inherited their weapons, but they're actually manufacturing a lot of stuff. Quite impressive, I suppose. Yeah, they were actually, yeah in charge of a lot of the, the arms manufacturing uh, inside the Soviet Union, which they then uh, continued. Uh, you've made an M270A1. Now, there's already an M270 in the core game. Why have you made your own? It was uh, primarily to be able to uh, to fill it with uh, new uh, munitions. I can't really say uh, which version the, the in-game is, uh, but we know it, it only carries the not, unguided not, yeah, versions. It's not yeah, the 1980s so, version, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. But this isn't the latest version. I, I made this uh, just to be able to, to add the guided version, but there is also an... A2. Uh, currently, uh, a lot of the US A1s is being upgraded. For example, with new fire control systems, we'll be able to fire the Prism as we we have on the high bars, which is a newer system. But I will, uh, um, yeah, I will sooner or later. I will make the A2 also. It looks a little different. There are some changes made, and it it will take the Prism. In terms of the actual vehicle, is the A1 the same vehicle as the one we have in core game? I would think so. Yeah, it's uh, based on the Brad the Bradley. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, vehicle, I think. And and uh, uh, the main thing with this one, uh, as opposed to the high Mars, is we have uh, dub uh, double the loadout. Uh, we have twelve uh, slots. Yeah. And finally, you've given another missile to high Mars. We've already got Attackums. We've already got SDB. We've already got Gimlers. What is this new one you've added? PRSM. Yes, uh, it stands for Precision Strike Missile, and it uh, is replacing the. Attack M's. I think they are uh, manufacturing a lot of them uh, right now, and it, it's a very modern version. Of it. It's smaller, so you can actually fit two of them in the HIMARS, and then we will see four of them in the M270. And it's even longer range, and it's even better accuracy. Roger, which is what today is all about. Now, before we do our missile competition, viewers, we're just going to show off the use of the sniper rifle and the ATGM. What we've got is 4,000 feet away from those units is a convoy of an unknown coalition, and they are very handily set up in order of toughness. So at the front, we've got this, a completely unarmored truck. Next, we've got this, uh, unarmored, but an offensive 
truck. Next, we've got this, a lightly armored APC. Then we've got a moderately armored APC. Then we've got, I think we'll call this an IFV. This is a BMP-1, uh, medium to heavy armor, medium armor, I guess. And then, of course, at the end, we've got a heffing great main battle tank. And we're going to see how much damage we can do with each of these units. So let's get stuck in. I'm going to use the game master slot here. We're going to have to be quiet today because I just got baby to sleep in the other room. So no shouty shouty from me. Right, we've had a change of heart. We wanted to make it harder. harder. So we've moved out from 4,000 feet to over one nautical mile, about 7,000 feet. We're up on a raised platform here so let's become the alligator obviously you can use it as any combined arms movable vehicles from inside press insert you can go outside press f7 you can have a look at him there he is and you can give him a detachable cover as well can't you ch yeah that's correct i have also animated the bolt action when i fire i will do that but not now let me do the science yeah. first so viewers let's get back inside Right, so I can zoom in with my right mouse. I'm going to have to add some lateral lead, but I can get it to uh, compute up and down lead for me by pressing <gasps> Lima. That's my laser range finder. Now I'm going to have to add aim in front of it. I'm going to try firing back there. Of course I missed. Ladies and gentlemen, super cap. Let's try again. Yeah, you can see the bullet hit. Is this a bullet or a shell? Is it high explosive or is it just a Yeah, slide? it's ar armor piercing incendiary. Look, you can see the damage on the right there, viewers. Hit it again. How complex are the damage models on these trucks, do you think? Is it just a hitbox? And... Oh, look, I've done it. Oh. Yeah, and these, these, uh, this is one. Uh, we actually tried to choose the more modern ones in DCS, and they actually have different, uh, depending on which side you're firing on. So there are still hitbox and points, but there are different points. Uh, Jeez, it's a lot uh, harder than I thought. Depending on where you shoot. Yeah, this, yeah. This is harder than I thought it was going to be a CH. I thought snipers yeah. were easy. They're not. They're only moving at five freaking knots. Like, I can't get him. Yeah, with all the sniper training and still this is what you got. I may need to go and stop him moving, viewers. <laughs> it's going to take some him. time. I got him, I got him, I got him. Viewers, a thing's going to happen. No one wants to sit here for two hours watching me miss, right? So let's do a tiny, tiny, tiniest change you can imagine, which is to make them not move at all. Ladies and gentlemen, super cap. I've not even put any freaking wind on. Does wind affect the bullets in game? Obviously, it does in real life. Yeah, that's a good question. I actually don't know. Someone that's find that's out. something for yeah another video. Another yeah, that's time. another video. We'd have to put a two thousand knot, one of my famous two thousand yeah. Jupiter winds on. Exactly. <laughs> <sighs> Funny. Right. Maximum. Comp we know that dies. You know what? I'm gonna do it anyway because yeah. it's easy now. So, watch how easy this is now, viewers. I'm gonna watch that cocking action you'd be talking about. Nice. Very clever, CH. And I've got it. Look, I killed it without even looking at it. That's yeah. so cool. <laughs> <sighs> right. You went from no novice to oh, a super sniper. moving. <laughs> Why are they moving? <laughs> Why are they... Yeah. No, they stopped. Oh, thank God. Right, CH. Yeah, that, that, that's, yeah that's a hindrance they can't get through. Yeah. <laughs> Two hits. So it takes three hits for that. Two hits for that, which is what you'd expect because it's tiny. Please stop moving. That's going to be easy to hit. That's going to be easy to hit. Right, this is about 15 mil armor, viewers. Oh, look, yeah. That's modeled. You can see the damage on the right if you want to know what I'm talking about, viewers. And this. you can right press if you want to zoom. Like I am zoomed, yeah, I'm zoomed in. Got oh, it. You are zoomed, okay. okay right, yeah. three hits, two hits, four hits. Yeah. Now uh, a BTR with, what do you call that, light to medium armor? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's... Uh... Yeah, front armor I think will sustain uh, this kind of caliber, uh, but they are not. They are rated for small arms fire on the sides and back, yeah. like seven six two. It's hitting but non-damaging. I can actually see the bullets bouncing off. I was a clever man. I'd figure out how to put the camera over there to see the bullets hitting, but I'm not that smart, I'm afraid. It's not hit, hurting it. Yeah, you will be able to hurt it if you uh, hit it on the right spot. Yeah. I'm okay, that's viewers. interesting. If it's the, the range or if it's from the side as opposed to, to the back of it. So that's interesting. Because I know uh, the rifle will take out a BTR-82 uh, fired at the right, uh, right, uh, the right okay. direction. And what we're going to do is just reset that, viewers, just so it's not in the middle of another one. Uh, which begs the question, do these bullets get slower as they go further, like they do in real life in-game? Yeah, therefore I, I less think powerful? they do, actually. Yeah, I think they do. That's I think that's modelled. Because we're a mile out here. We're over a yeah, yeah. mile out. It's a long way for a, for a 
shell bullet to travel. Exactly, Here's... and that's great if that's modeled. So it might be that with this range, we need to fire it uh, from behind to yeah. be able to take it out. That would be, uh, yeah, pretty accurate. I think you're right. Right, so, oh, yeah, I can definitely see it bouncing off the yeah. kind of middle, right? Yeah. Oh, look, damage. Oh, oh damage. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, so where was yeah, it? it's popping smoke, yeah. Right, I'm going hit, to try hitting low down, see if that is what's doing it. Yeah, and this is one yes, of the new models. So we actually have a lot of, I think it's like, uh, it's more than just a couple of uh, hitboxes. It has yeah. a lot of them with different... Uh, armor right so i've got to hit it in the right place but i think we can conclude that you will take it out it's a matter of time yeah. in the right place but it's as, as you mentioned it's it's pretty mm. hard at this distance right. um i will uh, i will side. i will try some rear shots in a minute but while we're here let's just try some side one mile shots of these yeah almost certainly we're not going to do any, any damage by what we've seen but yeah that's gonna be harder yeah i can definitely see it pinging off the armor yeah. yeah. All right, viewers. Um, we're going to change our angle now. See if that makes any difference. Right, we're back in again. This time they're presenting their rear hinds, rear hinds, rear sides. Just out of interest. It does more damage. Yeah. Ah, now it now it only takes two shots. Mm -hmm. Kudos to game. He didn't like that. In eighty-two percent. Well, that shows yeah. viewers that hitting the guy at a certain angle <laughs> will change. Oh, look at them going. Will yeah, change. yeah, they're getting scared. Speed that up, please don't. Wow. Why would it do that? There we go. I can still see his bottom. I mean, there's obviously a intimidation factor with this yeah. rifle. Right. <laughs> right. right, just yeah. Okay. Interestingly, this wasn't any less vulnerable from the rear. It was the other ones were though. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's an old uh, asset in DCS. Roger. Right. We're doing a modern asset from the rear. Ah, now that's doing more damage, 8%. Yeah, yeah. The first hit. 27%, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, that's all modelled, so that's good. Yeah, and that's... Yeah, exactly. Right, um, BTR 82 is down. You were right, CH. Yeah. What about where you position yourself yeah. to? Now, this guy's not taking any ammo at all, though. Uh, not taking any damage at all, though. Yeah, that's also an older model. Yeah. So I really can't vouch for its yeah. accuracy. Okay. Yeah, it's not going to take any damage, and obviously the tank is not. No, we've that's some... a combination of a tank and an old model. I know we've got some dynamics in play yeah. there, but all, all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. It showed yeah. that all of them apart from one took more damage from the rear, and roughly what we would expect, this rifle would kill that, it would kill that, yeah. it would kill that eventually, and it... Pro do you reckon it would kill the 82 in real life? Probably. Yeah. Kill it in game. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely in real life. As but I now, mentioned, it, it's all, uh, it, yeah, it can just take uh, small arms fire. That's what it's uh, specified to do. Uh, you can also take out uh, low flying helicopters with it. Oh, Jesus. That's tempting, but I am out of time. But I will no, take no, you no, yeah, that will take some time with your yeah. shooting. Yeah. Are you, <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, we couldn't kill that when you get to medium armor, and obviously, big armor, inches thick. It's just not going to happen. But very good, CH. We are now going to just run. This with the Stockner, uh, there's no scientific value here. I just want to blow some S up. Yeah, that's going to go, go a lot quicker. <laughs> yes, go, well, I don't know with my aim. Here he is. Now, why is he sitting separate from it like that? It's Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. It means you can ha you can be uh, like 20, 30, 40 meters uh, mm. from it and be uh, behind a hill or something and still be able to use it. How is, is, how is it guarded? Is it radio guarded? Yeah, uh, it, 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 it's laser guarded, I think. It's a la uh, oh, laser beam right. riding. Oh, yeah. yeah, me being stupid again. All right, viewers, um, I'm going to push the button and watch this. Man, this is satisfying. Oh, Jesus, look at that. What kind of warhead have we got in there? Yeah, it's a tandem warhead. It will go through most uh, every kind of uh, mm. uh, reasonable model uh, armor. I think it's like uh, 1.2 meters. Uh, uh, behind uh, reactive armor with this this, this is the largest uh, missile of them for any noobs like me can you explain tandem warhead while i mop these guys up yeah the first warhead will uh, uh, counteract with the the ex uh, reactive armor and so the reactive armor takes out the first one the second one will still be able to go through so there is nothing that's safe from this basically yeah And with this one, you can also take out uh, helicopters. It will actually go. It, it's not uh, a SAM system, but low-flying helicopters. Uh, if you're good enough with aiming, you can take them down. 
which we also have seen happening. Nice. For that view into Moontons, I'm going to do one more thing. I just want to show bending the missile. Look, watch this view. Yeah. And also for aesthetics and then looking cool, you can also on this one in the mission editor put a camouflage cover on the guy if you want it better. Or just the edge. In the surroundings. On to our competition of missiles throughout the ages and showing how much more accurate they're becoming. First, we need a target. We've got Hans uh, here. Say hello to Hans, CH. Hello. <laughs> hello, Hans. He is a very um, tough trooper and he doesn't mind getting shot at. The reason we're showing Hans is because he's a very small target and we're going to pretend that he's covered, surrounded by uh, collateral civilians. We want to kill Hans, but not the civilians. And we're going to do it starting with a very inaccurate weapon, a Scud. There are four different variants of Scud, I think, A, B, C, and D. A being terrible, B being a not quite so terrible, and finally D actually being moderately good. We've got a B here, so it's moderately terrible, I would describe that as. To show you how we've set them up, we've had to research the CEP, Circular Error of Probability, CH. Yeah. Okay, and we've converted that into, we've had to do a little bit of maths on it, and then convert it into feet into radius here. And we've got the official CEPs put in. For the Scud B, it's 2,700 feet. For the Attackums, these are in orders of inaccuracy. For the Attackums missile, we've got 54 feet, which is pretty impressive. Anything there is going to get atomized pretty much anyway. But 30 feet for the Gimlers. Uh, we've then got the High Mars, which I've actually forgotten, with the Prism Missile, which is 15 feet. And then we've got the most accurate. I don't know why it's the most accurate. I'm sure uh, CH will tell us in a bit. We've got the SDB at 6 feet. So, first, we're going to put the Scud on and watch it fire with its CEP of 2,700 feet. How do they make this thing so bad? That's without yeah. freaking wind. <laughs> yeah. In all seriousness, it's Scud is old, isn't it? I don't know, if it 50s? Yeah, the first version was, yeah, pretty old, yeah. Hey viewers, let's watch this ridiculously large, uh, whatever the word is, erection time, giggity. Sweet, sweet, eight minutes. There it goes. Okay, it's sort of, we call it, myself and uh, RC called it, RC, CH. Oh, RC phoned me up the other day, viewers, by the way, just to see how I was doing. The reason he's not being on is he's moved to, from a normal place, like where me and you live, to, like, out in the middle of nowhere. And I mean out in the middle of nowhere, and he hasn't got any internet, so, clever CH. Um, me and me and CH call this we call this a semi-ballistic missile, don't we? It doesn't go high enough or fast enough to be a hypersonic ballistic missile, but it's also like way above a normal missile. So I kind of call it a semi-ballistic missile. It's not a real term, obviously. Let's see what he can do with his car 98 mouser here. Hans is probably not feeling hugely threatened. So what he's going to do when the time is right, he's going to be busy calculating his <laughs> solution of shot, and then either he uses the mouser, he'll go to the rifle, or he'll throw his dagger. Either can happen, or even whatever the hell that thing is. Uh, that's all. Right. Come on, Hans. Do right. your worst. Can you see Hans? You watch this thing blow up now as Hans shoots it. That is so funny. <laughs> right, I will pause it before it hits. Don't worry if you're into wounds. You watch it hitting perfectly now. That would be so embarrassing. Yeah. No more video for me. Oh, God, it is actually coming. <laughs> oh, that's worrying. I mean, it's, yeah. All right. I'm Stati statistically, it's not very likely, but it could happen. I mean... Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a pretty pretty accurate one. I mean, every, anything can happen with these. <laughs> Anyone see Hans? There he is. That's that. Yeah, there. yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's a superb scud shot. <laughs> so what we're supposed to be showing to the valued viewers is how bad 1950s tech was, but it turns out it turns out it's actually excellent. Uh, and that was purely bad luck, viewers. It can go anywhere in the circle, and it's chosen to go right on Hans's head. So we apologise, Hans, but you're about to get smacked. Oh, Hans is, oh, his ego's hurt, but uh, he's not damaged by the blast. Why is that? Well, it's because we gave him some very, very tough armor. Right, yeah. you watch that be more better than Attackams now. That would be embarrassing for us, wouldn't it? <laughs> Tell us what you know about Attackams, CH. As we mentioned, it's the, the, the former uh, long-range uh, missile version, which we are replacing now, but it still it has a, a superb uh, range, and it's a large one. It's a large warhead, uh, and, and it's... I mean, if we, even if we're talking about, about the worst uh, accuracy now, worst in this case is uh, pretty impressive accuracy either way. Roger. Note how the tubes are big, but the fronts are small. Is that for trickery? Yeah, exactly. It's for trickery viewers. Roger, uh, as ever, I don't need to really tell you now. It's all like super modern 4K textures and all that awesome stuff. So watch this. 
All right, my first look. No, this is Attackums, isn't it? No, I've seen Attackums. Attackums yeah. is my favourite because it looks like a cartoon missile. <laughs> Hello, I built a cartoon missile. <laughs> Quick check of Hans. Yep, he's ready. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Obviously, we're aware that the splash damage of any of these missiles would just smash anything within hundreds of feet, viewers, but that's not what we're after today. What we're after yeah. is how accurate can we land the, the body of the missile. And this is a real thing as well, because I remember footage from 1991 when America was putting GBU-12s, laser-guided bombs, built in the 1980s, through windows. Do you remember seeing that footage? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they had cameras on the missile or... I can't remember, uh, on the bomb, and they could actually see the thing go through a window or a vent, which is a bit stupid, you know, because it was going to atomize the house, but it's still really cool. That's why we see a lot of more uh, electronic countermeasures now uh, on the battlefield, Ooh. because, uh, I mean, uh, all these missiles we're looking at now are, are reliant on the GPS system, and if that's uh, scrambled or, or put out of action in any way, it will totally make this uh, render them unusable. Which I believe is what's happening in Ukraine slash Russia right now, question mark? Yeah, yeah there'll be some news about it, yeah. Oh, the Ukraine is taking out a lot of them. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's going to hurt. That's right. pure... <laughs> Uh, that's a little bit uh, embarrassing, viewers, because it wasn't supposed to do that. We set the CEP so that it could go anywhere. Was it 54 feet that way? 54 yeah. feet this way? Again, just pure bad luck. Uh, it's got really accurate. But never mind. We'll see it through. We, we're not going to script this son of a bee. Right, watch this. Hans, I apologise. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Poor old Hans. Yeah, he doesn't budge an inch. No, but he's a tough trooper. Yeah, yeah. As long as it doesn't hit, yeah, he doesn't care. Well, it upset him. It, it might have upset him. And he's got to go down to a Nina. Oh, he got it in the leg, look. Oh, how about that, viewers? Uh, well, we're not really showing anything off to the valued viewers, but at least we're um, having a good chat. And sometimes a good chat's all that's needed, viewers. Next, we're going on to Gimler's. Entertain the viewers with anecdotes of Gimler's. It's just a guided rocket. Exactly, and that's why it uh, doesn't have the same range. It's a much smaller one. As you can see, we have six of them in every... Uh, canister here, uh, so they're much smaller. So that's uh, more or less, it's using the same as the uh, unguided one when it comes to the rocket booster, so it has a seeker on it. Roger, I'm just going to note that Gimler's is being used from HIMARS in Ukraine at the moment, just trying to keep things current, whereas yeah. Attackums is not. I've got that right, haven't I? Yeah, exactly. They didn't win. Really the super long range stuff. Yeah. Of course, they probably didn't want them hitting Mr. Putin's house, and that would might get yeah. a bit catastrophic. Speaking of which, did you see that drone that hit the break, not the Pentagon? Oh, what's it called? Kremlin, the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's weird. I don't really see yeah. the point of that, but they appear to have done it. It had like a like a one pound friggin' warhead in it. Stupid. Yeah. What were we gonna do with that exactly? <laughs> anyway, they did it. <laughs> Irritate someone. Probably irritated. Right. I'm, I'm getting more and more the feeling that DCS doesn't care about our... It doesn't. It's putting it in the uh, same place every When time, it comes it? to the GPS uh, stuff, it doesn't I'm... care about that setting. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Look at that, viewers. It's putting the wow. same thing it's in the same place every time. <laughs> wow, look at that. Hans, is... <laughs> Hans doesn't give a shit. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> it's looking like, viewers, <laughs> let me tell you what, what we think discovered is going on here. All these missiles that we're, all these missiles that we're using are guided. Um, different methods i think this will be what gps ins question yeah, mark yeah so yeah. it looks like we found this out for the first time that when you do that it ignores the cep value that we put in and just guides it directly to the point so the cep would only work if you used an unguided artillery shell or something i think that's what we're all discovering together but you know what yeah. and on the plus side of it we get to see oh why did that happen we get to see this happen and unpause there we go and well, he wants to ride it. He ride that. Look, he didn't cut it down on the knee this time. <laughs> yes, he does. Right, viewers, uh, where do we go next? I believe it's High Mars, and this is the first look at the what I'm going to call the Prism missile of Ewingtons. That's a new one uh, they are feeling right now. They're ramping up productions uh, with a much even better uh, accuracy, even longer range, and it's smaller, so you can have two of them. Uh, in the high Mars in one of these uh, canisters, and that means four of them in the newest version of the 270. You can even have the um, anti-ship version. I have modeled it here uh, with the usage of AVAX coverage to find the uh, sea targets. Um, 
Okay, let's see how thing this how this thing performs. It looks like I don't know what it looks like. It looks like a pack two Patriot missile to me. Yeah, exactly. It's very pointy, and that's a good thing. Uh, pointy missiles are the best missiles. I think. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Yeah, that's very Yeah. Hans, I've changed his name. Doesn't matter. He's just taking it. Yes, he is. I've changed his name to Hans Gruber now. Anyway. Do you know who Hans Gruber is? Break. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you do know who Hans Gruber is. One of my favourite baddies of, of all time. Yeah, yeah. Right. Hello, Rick. Yes. Uh, Schiessen Defensa. Uh, right, let me try and get this right. And... Oh, smack. Yeah. Right down his gullet. <laughs> when I was planning this video, viewers, what I'd have is... Uh, oh, I don't know. I thought it... Oh, it does make a mark in the ground, doesn't it? Yeah. You can see the concrete from the grassy... Look at that. The grassy knoll. Yeah. Well, it did, yeah. a, it did a thing, viewers. I basically <laughs> basically fulfilled our legal obligations so far of showing off the missiles, but we're going to carry on because we don't give up. So last one is going to be the most accurate. It's going to be uh, SDB, small diameter bomb? Yeah, exactly. Tell That's me the one it... they have uh, on, on the aircraft, uh, the one with the wings. Uh, hmm. And they actually mounted the M26 uh, rocket booster, as we have seen on both the unguided version and the Gimbler's guided version, along to this with an adapter. Uh, so they have the combination of the first booster, and then it releases the actual small diameter bomb. It's, been made by it's a pretty clever uh, contraption. This is a clever contraption, isn't it? Look at that. Another thing. Yeah. Why is it so accurate, CH? Yeah, it has to be uh, depending on the seeker. The seeker head. Uh, so it's a good chance... And, and, and it's, it's not moving as fast. I mean, it should be easier to... Hit stuff when you're not moving in five. So if this has been fired in Ukraine slash Russia at the moment, Russia would probably be jamming the GPS, so it wouldn't work, would it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why we have seen uh, more and more of, of uh, the Russian uh, uh, ECM stuff taken out. So they are targeting them by other means. It is going to be accurate. Uh, it's yeah. going to be really accurate. Look at this. Okay, watch this. And the size of the things always strikes me when you see it compared to humans. Oh, Everything geez. is so big. <laughs> Actually, I think that's quite small. It's more smaller than what I was used to. Yeah. I don't know. It's called small down my bomb. I don't know. It's as big yeah, as a yeah, person. Yeah. It's as big as a person. Let's see how close we can get it. <gasps> oh, his feet. It was accurate, Stitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, viewers. Hans is going to yeah. be most upset after that. He's going to need a small bar. All right. Um, so, what we saw there, the video didn't work at all. My idea of showing the accuracy off because it appears the game does not allow me to vary the uh, accuracy if it's a guided weapon. It will just go wherever I put the, the thing on the map. But never mind. But as you probably guessed, it wasn't important anyway. It was just really uh, an excuse to show off uh, CH's latest stuff, which is, of course, freely available in the link in the video description. CH, anything to add from you? No. Nope. Uh, bye bye.